Hey guys, this is section 4.1, it's about exponential functions. And so an exponential function is some function where you have um, usually growth or decay, uh, something like uh, financial equations where you're getting compound interest is an exponential. Um, anything where like a population of something is increasing by 17% per year, or your car is depreciating, depreciating at a rate of you know 6% per year, those are all examples of exponentials. Um, so <clears throat> our general form is f of x equals a b to the x. And so this is good when you have ordered pairs or um, if the language is something is doubling or tripling. Uh, this other version of it, it just has it as r plus 1, and this b is r plus run 1. It's called the growth uh, factor. And r is like the rate, like the 17% per year increase. The 17% goes in there. Um, x is very often time, and then f of x is just um, what we get out as a function of that time. Uh, the a is important. The a is the initial value, and so a is what, um, it's however much we're starting with. So if it was money, it's how much I put in the account. If it was a population of bacteria is increasing at 3% per day, um, that initial population that you start with, that's, that's a. And the reason is that um, if x is 0 in either of these, I'll just do it in this one, a, b to the 0, b to the 0, we'll just call this y, um, b to the 0 is 1, so that means y equals a. So when uh, the input is 0, the output y is this a, so that's our initial value. Okay, so for number 1, um, Tuition is currently 1050. If tuition has been increasing 7% per year, predicted tuition in five years. So um, our initial amount is going to be A is 1050. Our rate, uh, since it gives a percentage, we're going this way. So rate is 0 0.07. And then we know the input time, or in this case X, is uh, five years. So setting up my equation, we're finding f, we're finding the output, so we're finding f of 5, and that's going to be 1050, and then uh, 0 0.07 plus 1 raised to the 5. So adding these together, 1050, I get 1.07 raised to the 5th. And then if you chunk that in your calculator, if you have the uh, little scientific calculator where you can't see everything you're typing, go um, 1.07 and then your raise to button, which is either caret, maybe exponentiate, or it could be y to the x. It's usually one of those three. So 1.07, that to the fifth. And then um, if that doesn't give you, then hit enter, I guess, and then times 1050, enter. And then you should get 1472.68. So that'd be the tuition five years later. So for number two, a car is purchased for $24,000 and depreciates. So this time our rate's going to be negative because it's um, becoming less valuable. Uh, at a constant rate of 5% per year, A, find an equation, P of T, for the depreciation, where P is the price t years after the purchase, and b, how much is the car worth after 10 years? So part a is just setting up the equation. So we're, um, we're not trying to solve for anything, we're just trying to get this information into an equation. So they're telling us to use p of t, and that's going to equal um, a, b uh, to the t, and our a is going to be the um, 24,000. Actually, let me write, I'm using um, f of x equals a b to the x. So that's our f of x. a is 24,000. Um, b is 5%. Actually, I'm not using b. I'm sorry. I'm using rate plus 1 to the x. Um, so that's rate is going to be negative 0 0.05 plus 1 because uh, it's depreciating. And that's raised to the t, is what we're calling the input variable. So cleaning that up a little bit, p of t equals 24,000. This would be like a buck minus 5 cents. That's 0 0.95 or 95 cents. I 
give it as money. Um, so what those numbers are representing is that if our car is depreciating at 5% per year, that means next year it's only going to be worth 95% of what it was this year. Um, so this would be our answer for part A, is just to get the thing set up. And then for part B, they're asking us to find P of 10. So we'll just chunk that in right here and plug all that in the calculator, do this part first and then times that at a second. And for that, I got uh, 14,369.69. So for this next problem, we're gonna use y equals a b to the x. Um, and I set it up over here to show the some scratch work on this 0, 100 point. Um, so what we're gonna do is we need to find a and b uh, because x and y are our input and output variables, a and b are our constants. Um, but over here, what they gave us is actually a. So if I let um, x equals 0 and then y is 100, b to the 0, that just equals 1. So I'm left with the a is 100. So essentially, any time they give you something like this, 0, 100, they're giving you 0 and one of the variables that you needed to solve for, which makes this problem easier than the next one because now I can let this equal x, y. So that's going to be my x and my y. And I also happen to know now that a is 100, so that gets me everything but b, and I can solve for b. So y is going to be 21,600. a is 100 got from over here. b is what we don't know and what we're trying to find out. And our x is 3. So first thing I want to do is definitely divide over this 100 before I try to tackle the cube. And knock off two zeros. We have 216 equals b cubed. And then next I'll cube root both sides. And so cube root of 216 is 6. And if you're not a person who knows that off the top of their head, which is pretty much everyone, um, you can put that cube root 216 in the calculate, calculator. Um, either look for there's a button usually that's like the nth root of x, and you do 3, and then price second function, that button, and then the 216. Um, or you can just put 216 uh, raised to the 1 third, which you would type caret or exponentiate, however yours is, parenthesis 1 divided by 3. Because um, raising something to the 1 third is the same as taking a cube root. So either of those would get you that. And then your actual answer for this is um, y equals 100. That was our a. b is now 6 raised to the x. So that would be our form. So number 4 isn't quite as nice as number 3 because we didn't get the 0 number, so we didn't get a. Uh, so I'm going to use the same, same formula, though. y equals a b to the x. And I'm just going to set this up once with 3 and 10 and once with 5 and 160. So over here, um, if y is 10, when x equals 3, so a, b, cubed. And over here, I'd have um, 160 when a, b, when x is 5. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve, um, I'm going to solve both sides for it to isolate a. So here I'll divide out b cubed. And here I'll divide out b to the fifth. And so what that lets me do is now 10 over b cubed equals a, 160 over b to the fifth equals a. Now I can set them equal to each other since they equal the same thing. Oops, cubed. And then I think I want to get um, my b's on one side and um, my numbers on the other. So I'm going to multiply both sides by um, b to the fifth to bring that over. So these cancel. Right here I'll have 5 up and 3 down so that gives me 10b squared equals 160. And then I'll divide the 10 over. And 
and then that gets me b squared equals 16. And I don't have to worry about the plus or minus on the root because the, the base of an exponential can't be negative. So this will just be b equals 4. And once I know b is 4, I can come back to either of my original equations and solve for a. This one has a little bit smaller um, numbers and powers, so I'm going to go with that. So I have 10 equals a, b is 4 to the third up there. So that's 10 equals 64a. Divide the 64 over, and 10 over 64 equals a, and then I can reduce that fraction. So let me simplify that down to uh, 5 30 seconds. So then my final on this will be y equals um, a 5 30 seconds times 4 and then raised to the x. So those are a or b and x is our variable. So then uh, the next couple things up are financial formulas. So this is our compound interest formula. I'll just kind of run through the um, what all the variables are fairly quickly. Um, a is the account value. So that's like we invest some money and then it sits there for a while and gets interest. That's uh, the amount of money we have after some time, uh, t later. Uh, t is time measured in years. P right here is the principal. Um, so it's how much we put in originally. Um, R is the annual percentage rate. Uh, you want to do that as a decimal, so it's the, you know, you get 6% interest or whatever. That would be R. And then N is the number of compounding periods per year. And so, like, if uh, the money is compounded quarterly, then N is 4. If it was compounded monthly, N would be 12, and so forth. Um, so this first one goes, um, a bank credit card charges an interest rate of 19% per year compounded monthly. If a college senior charges her last tuition bill of $3,000 and intends to make a lump sum payment in one year, what will she have to pay? Okay, so uh, the amount is what we're trying to figure out, how much she has to pay. And so we know it's going to be, um, actually, you know, let me go ahead and make the list. So the amount is the, the question mark. Um, the principal is going to be our $3,000. The rate is 19%, ouch. Um, N, it was compounded monthly, so N is 12. And it is going to sit there for one year, so T is 1. So that's kind of all the stuff we have that's supposed to be in there, and it just doesn't look like one. Um, so plugging up uh, all these sort of into this, we're going to have a of 1, because we're evaluating it one year, uh, principal of $3,000, 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.19 over 12. To the, and then up here is um, to the nt, just that's very small and hard to read, I'm sure. So n was 12 again, and t is 1. And so then we just plug all that in a calculator and we get our amount after a year. And if all that makes it in there successfully, it should be, let's see, it's $3,622.35 is what I got. Uh, again, if you're plugging this into a small um, calculator where you can't put it all in at once, um, I would go 0.19 divided by 12, enter, plus one, enter, and then raise to the 12th, enter, times 3,000, enter. And hopefully that gets you to that number. So for this next one, we have a continuously compounding formula. So the word continuous is sort of the key to knowing um, which one you're using. If it talks about monthly, daily, quarterly compounding, uh, that's the last one. Continuous is going to mean it's going to use this one with the E. And E, remember, we met this back in um, when we were graphing exponentials just for a second. It's this 2.718 goes on to infinity and never repeats type number, so it's an irrational number. Um, here's one definition. I'm going to kind of skip past the definition. And for those who are interested, there's tons of information out there on E. And E is actually a really cool number uh, for the sake of this video not getting to be longer and longer. Um, I'm going to move into the problem. 
So um, for this formula, A is still our amount after some time, P is still our principal, E is this number, and then R and T are still rate and time. And so let's see, an account now contains uh, $4,694.03, that's our starting amount, um, and has been accumulating interest in an annual rate of 7% compounded for nine years. Oh, no it's not, find the initial deposit, sorry. So this is our, this is our amount, this is our A. Um, and they were talking about nine years ago how much was in there. So 4694.03. And then our rate is 7%. And our time is nine years. So this time we know how much we got out. We got out 4694.03. But we don't know how much we put in, so that's what we're trying to figure out. And then this is e to the rt, so r is um, 0 0.07 and t is 9. So um, we got 4694.03 and then p. And so this, um, if you do um, this times this first, you'll get uh, 0.63, I think. And then you're just going to go e raised to that. And then if you do all that, on your calculator, there should be a number that looks like 1.8776 that goes on forever. Um, oftentimes there's a, um, if you do uh, this and then divided by second function answer, they'll take you back to the last answer and copy this and paste it into um, that new screen. Uh, so if we do that, so we're dividing this over essentially. Um, if you're going to write it all out, take it out to, you know, probably at least four or five, six decimals. Uh, if you round it too early, you're going to be off when you try to put the numbers in the computer. You'll be off in, um, in the decimal and it won't take the answer. So definitely take it out like five, six places, I think, to be safe. Um, so I'll go dot, dot, dot. And then, so if you put that in there, you should get um, 2,500. So for this last one, number seven, we deposit a thousand bucks in a savings account that earns 6% compounded continuously. So there's that word, it means we're using the E formula. Find the amount in the account after 10 years. Okay, um, so A equals 1,000, that's how much we deposit. E to the 0 0.06 uh, to the 10. You know, something I should have mentioned on the last example is <laughs> where do you find E? So E, if you look under, if you look for a button that says LN and then look at the second function of that, you should see a little E to the X button. So it'd be second function of the LN and that's almost always E. Um, so now we just look for that button and then that will get you E raised to and then you can actually just go 0 0.06 and then times 10 in there. And then after you do that times 1000 and you should get 18, 22, 12 is the amount after 10 years.